हेलो हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम सर वालेकुम सलाम आई एम ऑन कैंपस सो इफ यू आर अवेलेबल प्लीज कम जॉइन इन इवेंट हॉल ओके सो वी विल स्टार्ट शॉर्टली सो हम सो डू डू यू प्रेफर दिस वे और जस्ट ऑनलाइन this way this is better yes do i need to is it better now no is it better now is it working it is is it working Okay. It is on from here, so I don't know. Okay, I will try to speak louder. Is it okay? Anyway, so last time uh, we we were talking about um, DFAs, NFAs, and uh, we stopped at a point where. Um, we discussed that regular languages are closed under uh certain operations right so there were two operations specifically that we talked about and the first one was the union and the other one was the uh, con i mean concatenation so uh the thing is that <clears throat> in order to uh in order to prove uh that that regular languages are closed under these two things we need a new tool and that tool is non determinism okay so that new tool is non determinism ye mic jo hai wo iska ho sakta hai ye yahan se on hai lekin mere khayal mein awaaz nahi ja rahi Speakers, speak, speak. Uh, <clears throat> so we need a new tool, and that tool is called non-determinism. And uh, just give me one second. Just give me one second. okay in in uh, i think we started talking about what is non determinism and uh, uh, what is non determinism anyone uh, does anyone remember yes so non determinism actually means that uh, in in the context of automata it means that um, the transition function is a partial function and because of that that function is a partial function it is possible that the machine could be in multiple states at the same time so it could be in one state and it could be another state so it could be in uh, one or two or multiple states at the same time so this is what 
is meant by non-determinism usually in the context of um, uh, theory of computation, automata, and machines, right? So this non-determinism is important in a sense that um, it will allow us to prove this theorem, and it will also allow us to prove some other results in, in theory of computation. So non-determinism actually, uh, I mean, it, it improves some things, it allows us to do something, but then we also saw a theorem which says that a deterministic finite automata and a non-deterministic uh, finite automata are actually equivalent. That is whenever you have an NFA, you can convert it into a DFA, right? And, and a DFA and NFA accept exactly the same kind of languages. So I think you also remember that what does it mean by accepting a language? Do you remember that? Do you remember the concept of accepting a language? No? What does it mean by a machine accepting a language? Yes. No. Yes. You can what? Uh, no, uh, not exactly. So. Sir, can I say? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, so if, if a machine accepts a language A, we say that that language A is set of all the strings that the machine will be accepting. Yes, so, uh, so when we say that uh, we have a machine that accepts a certain language, uh, then there's a concept of a language associated with every machine, right? So, so right now, the only machines we are uh, working with or talking about are finite automaton. Uh, and we have two versions of finite automaton, which is uh, the non-deterministic version and a deterministic version. So we say that, suppose I have a machine M, and I do not know what this machine looks like or what this, this machine, I mean, uh, what is the input. If I say that this machine is M and it's, let's say it's, it's one of the finite automaton, uh, then we say this machine M accepts a language L. Okay, so the language of the machine is the set of all the strings which are accepted by this machine. That is, if you send a string as input to this machine and that string ends up in one of the final or accepting states, we say that that machine is, that string is accepted by the machine. And if you consider all such strings and create a set of all those strings, then that is called the language of the machine. So. Uh, usually the language of a machine is an infinite language, right? So most, uh, most languages accepted by, uh, by a machine are infinite. Okay. Uh, so we say that, <clears throat> so we started with uh, this concept of DFA and NFA. And in order to prove this result that uh, the regular languages are um, closed under union and concatenation. And later on, we will also prove that they are also closed under the clean star operation. Uh, then we need to use the tool of non-determinism. Even though non-determinism does not add any computational power, it allows us to do a few things uh, which we cannot do in, in deterministic machine. Okay? And actually, this leads us to one more important result and which we will use uh, to prove this result. And that result is that NFA and DFA are equivalent. That is, if I have an NFA, I can always convert it into a DFA. And for DFA, we know that all the languages accepted by DFA are regular languages, right? Therefore, all the languages accepted by NFA must also be regular languages because NFA and DFA are equivalent. And uh, if I know a mechanism to convert an NFA to DFA, uh, then it means that we know what kind of languages these, uh, these are accepted, right? And then we later on talked about that what is the uh, formal definition of an NFA. It's exactly the five things that we define for DFA. Uh, but the only difference over here is the, is the transition function. And the transition function is a partial function uh, rather than a total function, right? So far, so good. Any questions? No questions? Okay. <clears throat> okay. So. So since we know that all the languages accepted by DFA are regular languages, and I have a result which says that NFAs and DFAs are equivalent, then how can we prove it? We can prove it that uh, if I can convert, uh, 
if I have a language A, which can be accepted by a DFA as well as at the same time accepted by a similar NFA, then NFA and DFA are equivalent, right? Or if I can convert an NFA into a DFA, then we can say that uh, these are equivalent, right? So, so the proof is easy and I will not go into detail about the proof right now, maybe uh, later on, uh, but this leads to another result and that result says that, so it's a corollary of everything that we have done. It says that a language is regular if and only if some non-deterministic finite automata recognizes it. Okay. So we will use this word recognizes and accepts uh, interchangeably, uh, at least in the context of finite automata. Later on, when we will learn about new machines, uh, new different uh, computational models, uh, then we would have a distinction between recognize and accept. But right now, it doesn't matter if you use the recognize or accept. Okay. Uh, so in this statement, yes. Yeah, but since every NFA is equivalent to DFA, so it doesn't matter if the statement says uh, NFA or DFA, right? And actually we will use this NFA, the property of NFA in this theorem uh, to prove it uh, because we cannot prove it directly with DFA. So we will use the indirect way. Okay, uh, but before we go and prove it, uh, I have a question and that question is, do you understand what does it mean by if and only if? Discrete maths refresher. Yes, what does it mean by if and only if? Anyone? Uh, mic? Yes, can anyone tell me what is uh, if and only if? Do you know the difference between if and if and only if? There are two things. Usually you find if statements and you find if and only if statements. Have you ever seen it before? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't yes, remember? Sir. Yeah, can anyone tell, uh, tell me what is it from uh, the audience? If there is an if means there is an else part also. But if, it's, if we say if and only if then means this is the Sirf or sirf gets an old woman. That one. Uh, no, smart. Exactly, but maybe you are around, but not exactly. Yes, can anyone else, uh, can anyone else try? Sir, uh, for if there there is there can be multiple conditions, but for if and only if there can only be just one condition. Can you give an example? Because I don't understand your example, your definition. Um, sir. I don't remember exactly. We studied about this thing in discrete mathematics mm -hmm. in second semester. So, yeah, so that's a problem. So if your discrete math is not good or you are not, I mean, if you don't remember things, then it will create problems in all of your CS courses or at least all we the can, courses. Right? Uh, yes. So we can say the answer is either only yes or only no. Well, again, can you repeat? Means if we are given any uh, question, then the answer is only yes or only no. It won't be in between. Uh, I think like no, that's not correct. Is it is it better now? Uh, is it better for, for for the students who are online? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. That that's not the right definition of if and only. So. Have you ever seen what, what is meant by implication? Do you know what is an implication? No? Which condition? But I have not said anything about the conditions, right? Yes. 
No, no, it's, it has nothing to do with regular or not. Just asking what is if and only. We are using. So can, uh, <coughs> yes, please. So can we say about that if in, in, in conditions where we are given by the name of if or if and only if both the conditions need to be true in all which false. Conditions? Where, which conditions? Like in, in, the, ca in the case of uh, like when we create a two table and we go for sensing out the implications, okay. we have uh, to see that both the inputs are let, either let, true or either false. Let me write some statements here and then I will come back to this question. Uh, so let me write. <clears throat> so uh, I would say, let's say N is a natural number. Okay. So I say N is even if and only if n plus one is odd. What does it mean? What does this statement tell us? Yes. Uh, that this is, this is the necessary condition and this is the only condition that we need to check for. So what is necessary condition? What is, what is meant by necessary? That, that this condition must be met, like this should be true. Yes, uh, what you were saying? So, which other thing? I, I don't know. Okay, so I, I, I think you, you have some ideas about if and only, if, but maybe not uh, in, a, in a formal manner. So, yeah. So, so the thing is that uh, in, in a simple prepositional logic, if I have a preposition P and I say that P implies Q, it means uh, if P, then Q, right? So this is the translation of this statement. But when I say if and only if, if I say P, if and only if, and I sometimes you write if and only if using IFF. IFF is the short form for if and only if. So P, if and only if Q means that we have P implies Q and we have Q implies P. So it goes in both directions, right? So it is from left to right as well as from right to left. So it means that N is even if and only if N plus one is odd, it means that N plus one is odd if and only if N is even. So it goes both ways. And not all mathematical statements are uh, bi-directional or if and only if. There are some statements which are just one direction. They do not go in both directions. So let me give you an example, which is not from math, and uh, maybe it will it will clear some ideas. For example, I can write uh, uh, if it is raining, then roads are wet. Right. So this is just one directional implication. It goes from one direction. Okay. If roads, if, if it is raining, then roads are wet. It does not say anything about if the roads are wet, then it is raining. So it is just P implies Q. It is not Q implies P. Okay. So some statements are like this. Some statements have if and only if. So when, whenever we have if and only if, we have uh, two proofs. One proof is not enough. Okay. So for example, in this statement, it says that the language is regular if and only if some non-deterministic finite automaton recognizes it, it means that we have to have two parts in the proof. The first part is we assume that our language is regular, then there must exist a non-deterministic finite automaton that recognizes it. And the second part would be imagine there exists a non-deterministic finite automaton. Then the language which that it, that this machine accepts must be regular. So it is not it's not obvious. So whenever such a, such a proof comes in exam, for example, or in book, uh, you need to read the, both the part, right? So, so one part is not enough. One part uh, just tells you that it is true in one direction, but the other part tells you that it's also true in the other direction. And not all mathematical statements are like that. Some mathematical statements are like that, okay? So anyway, so in this one, uh, we need to prove two things. So for example, we assume that a language is regular, uh, then we should be able to construct a non-deterministic finite automata for it, right? 
And in the second part, we will say that, okay, suppose we have a non-deterministic finite automaton, uh, then how can we know that the language is, is regular, right? Uh, so let me, okay. <clears throat> so this is basically uh, a way to prove it. So we will prove the first part. And usually we write, uh, this symbol, it means that we are proving in this direction. And the second part will look like proof with this direction, right? So right now we are proving in the forward direction. So it means that suppose uh, there is a language, there is a regular language, regular language A. So we should be able to construct an NFA for it. Okay, we should be able to construct an NFA for, for it. So how can we construct? So before we begin the proof, the formal proof, so let me uh, show you a few things, okay? And we will talk about regular languages. And what is a regular language? We already have seen that what are the regular languages. Uh, but let me explain what is a regular language in a in a formal way. Okay, uh, so we all already know that a finite automaton accepts a regular language, and whatever whenever we have a regular language, uh, we can have a finite automaton, right? Uh, but there is another thing which we call regular expression. Okay, so what is a regular expression? A regular expression is an expression a statement which defines a regular language, okay? Uh, this, this statement actually captures the spirit and captures the entire uh, types of the strings that this, this language will be accepted, okay? So let's go back and see what is meant by an alphabet and what is meant by a string and what is meant by a language, right? So we know that alphabet is the, is the building blocks, strings are the sequences built using the building blocks and the language is basically the set of string, right? So, so let us fix our alphabet to just two characters, zero and one for the time being. And it doesn't matter if, if, if our alphabet contains uh, more than two characters or, or, or just two characters, it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, suppose we have some strings and I define a language L as a language all strings from over sigma such that they end in zero one, okay? All such strings which end in zero one. So what strings are in this language? Is zero in L? No. Zero in L? No, it is not. Is one in L? No. Is no. empty in L? No. Okay. So what are the languages? So you can have any string, but the only requirement is that at the end of the string must be zero and one. So zero one is in L, right? Zero zero one is in L. One zero one is in L and so on and so forth. There are many, infinitely many strings which are in, which are in L. Okay. So one way to describe this language is using this set. Right? And this using words and things like that. There's another way to describe this language and that way is using regular expressions. Okay? So we will use these regular expression to describe this language. Okay? So can you tell me what is the general pattern of these strings which are in this language? So we can have any string of zeros and ones, but the only requirement that is that it should end with zero one, right? So can I say that if I have zero or one, so this plus means or, so I can have any strings of zero and one and I can put a star over here, right? Zero plus one star, what, what kind of strings it will give me? give me? It will give me all strings of zeros, it will give me all strings of one, it will give me all strings of zeros and ones, right? And I can concatenate this string with zero one. Right now, this expression 
is capable of describing all the strings that are in the language A that I just shown you in this, uh, in this set. This language L contains all such strings which are described <coughs> this, uh, using this expression. Yes. Uh, <coughs> if you put a comma, it will work, but since there is a syntax for a particular syntax for regular expression, so we don't put comma. Yes. How, do, how did I? Why did I write zero plus one? Yeah, okay. That, that's a good question. So, in regular expression, uh, so uh, for example, if I write one plus two multiplied by three, you know what kind of expression it is? It's an arithmetic expression, right? So, it means that uh, we are multiplying some numbers and adding some numbers. So, it's an arithmetic expression. So regular expression is a kind of expression which uh, uses some constants, some variables, some operations, and some precedence rules, right? So parentheses have the similar kind of parentheses, uh, pre precedence. For example, this expression one plus two star three means that we need to multiply two and three first, then add one, right? But if you want to change the order, you would put uh, one plus two star three, right? So this plus sign is for addition, this star sign is for multiplication, right? So in regular expression, we have some uh, operators. So we have a plus operator. This plus operator is basically union operator. It says that that whatever that is on the left or what is whatever that is on the right or both, it's it's a union operator, right? And uh, in in math, sometimes multiplication can be replaced by a dot, or sometimes you do not have anything. For example, if I have a variable y and I multiply it by variable y, I just write x y. Right? So this is writing two variables together means multiplication, right? So same thing uh, comes here. So if I have one string and I write another string beside it, it means it is concatenation. So sometimes we use a concatenation uh, symbol that is the small uh, circle. Sometimes we just omit like multiplication in the arithmetic expression. So I can write x dot y to mean exactly x multiplied by y, or I can just write x y. So same thing goes here. So if I'm writing zero uh, concatenated one with one, it's exactly same as writing zero one, right? So zero one here are concatenated, zero is concatenated with one, and this whole thing is concatenated with whatever that we will get from the left hand side, right? So these are some of the operators that we use in, in defining regular expressions. Uh, star is a regular expression uh, operator, which is the clean star operation. And we have already talked about what is meant by clean star. So whenever you put a, whenever you put a star on something, it means the empty string is included. Then any number of copies can be uh, concatenated together, right? So zero plus one means that we either we can get zero, or we can get one, or we can get both. And then we can get zero copies of zeros and ones, or one copies of zeros and one, or infinitely many copies of zeros and ones. So zero plus one star means that all possible strings of zeros and one are possible here, okay? And then at the end, we, we say that whatever that you will get from there, you need to put zero and one because this way the string will always end in zero. So this is an expression for the language that we defined in the last page. Yes. Yes, uh, no, in, in union, the order doesn't matter because union is a commutative operator, right? So A union B, same as B union like one plus two is same as two plus one, right? So this plus here represents union and the order is not important. So as, as you mentioned, we, we can we could also write it as uh, zero comma one star zero one. This is also uh, okay, but this is not uh, standard. Okay? So we, we, we try to avoid it, but it, it conveys exactly the same thing. So the order is not important here. The order is, is important in concatenation, but not uh, other places, okay? So zero one is definitely not equal to one zero, but zero plus one is same thing as one plus zero. Okay, is this in clear? Sir, well, uh, zero and one appear equal amount of times. Uh, what? 
so where zeros and ones appear like equal amount of time like uh, no, always not necessary not necessary they can appear any amount of yes 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 that's exactly what i said that we can either put a this small circle or we can omit it it's not necessary okay like multiplication circle yes what's your question yeah sometimes we write this plus sometimes we write comma sometimes we write u so yeah they are all same it doesn't matter is this in clear so it means now we have one more result before we could prove the original result and that is all regular languages can be expressed or described using regular expressions okay so if you have a regular expression it means it is a regular language and if you have a regular language you can always describe it by a regular expression okay now if we go back to our theorem which says that a language is regular if and only if a non deterministic finite automata recognizes it it means that a language is regular if and only if uh, so we can say that regular for every regular expression there exists a non deterministic finite automata and for every non deterministic finite automata there exists a regular expression right so we would say that okay from now this point onwards we would work we start with an arbitrary regular expression and we will try to find out ways to convert an arbitrary regular expression into equivalent non deterministic finite automata okay and the process is very simple and it's actually very mechanical so if you follow the algorithm you will you will get it it's it's uh, it doesn't require any creativity it's it's straightforward okay so before we go there let me explain uh, more about what are the regular expression in little bit more detail and then we can uh, do that okay so we say that if uh, a is a regular expression it's not a good idea to use uh, let's say e1 is a regular expression and e2 is a regular expressions okay imagine e1 and e2 are regular expressions then e1 e2 is another regular expression that is concatenation of two regular expression is regular if e1 and e2 are regular expressions <clears throat> then e1 plus e2 or in other words we say that e1 union e2 is also regular so you can combine two regular expressions by concatenation you can combine two regular expression using the operation of union and there is third one and that is if e1 is regular then e1 star is also regular okay fine and the simplest or the atomic regular expressions are those regular expressions which only use the symbols from the alphabet okay if your alphabet is equal to a1 a2 and some ak then a1 is regular expression a2 is a regular expression a3 is a regular expression and all these elements are regular expression yes yes right and that's exactly what we used in the last example so i fixed the alphabet is 0 and 1 two alphabets so i say 0 is a regular expression right plus 1 is a regular expression so this is one regular expression i put a star over here it, it is still a regular expression i concatenate it with 0 it's still a regular expression i concatenate with another regular expression which is one so this the whole thing is regular expression right so if you take any symbol out of the alphabet that symbol is the basic or the atomic regular expression every character in a, every a character every symbol in the alphabet is a regular expression then you can combine two characters or two regular expressions using concatenation or union or you put you can put a star on any one of them okay 
and then you can use any number of parentheses for precedence, right? So precedence, this is used for precedence. So for example, if you want to do something before something else, then, then you would use uh, this, this precedent. For example, uh, you can say that uh, I, I want to look for, all, for a language that starts with um, one zero and it should end with zero one and in between it can have any number of zeros. So how can we write? So we can write, so it starts with one zero, then it can have any number of zeros and ones, and then it can end with zero. Right, so it's a, it's a regular expression, which starts with one zero, then it has any number of zeros and ones, and then it ends with zero one, okay? Uh, sometimes we can uh, uh, simplify some regular expressions. How can we simplify, simplify regular expression? For example, if I say that I have zero and one, and I put a star, then I have zero and one, and I put a star, yes. Yes, yes. One zero zero one. One zero, one zero, zero one. So this one is this, this one is this, and one zero that is in between comes from here. Okay. Now, for example, if I if I say that I have a regular expression e, which is this concatenated with this, right? Uh, then it is uh, it is not necessary to have these two copies because they mean exactly the same thing. So I can simplify it as just zero plus one star, right? It doesn't matter if you have these two things because you can simplify. So there are other simplification rules as well. Uh, some of them are obvious, some of them are not obvious, some are, some are trivial, some are non-trivial. Uh, so we will not go into details about uh, uh, those simplification rules. Uh, but once they come in some examples or some context, then then I will show that uh, this is how we do. Yes. Yes. Whenever you have a star, empty empty string is always there. Empty string is always there. Right. So, for example, if I write a string as one zero epsilon zero one, then this is exactly equal to one zero zero one because epsilon means nothing. Right. So, so it's like if you are using Java or Python, uh, it's like uh, you have one zero, then you add uh, empty string, then you add uh, zero one. So if, if you add this one or you don't add this one, doesn't have any impact, right? So that's exactly what we do. Clear? Is this thing clear? So so we know that the simplest regular expressions are those expressions which are just symbols, one symbol at a time. Uh, and for every symbol, you can get one regular expression. And whenever you have two regular expressions, you can combine them using concatenation or union, or you can put a star over them and you can use any parentheses to uh, impose any precedence, right? Like arithmetic expressions. Okay, now we will go from regular expressions to NFA. Okay, we will go from regular expressions to NFA. So this is how we will do. Okay, so I will define that how we uh, do that. So what are the simplest regular expressions? The simplest regular expressions are those which are coming from the symbols from the alphabet. Suppose our alphabet contains alphabets as A, B. And let's say we, we just fix them for two, A and B, right? And I have a regular expression, E, which is equal to A, okay? So what is the equivalent NFA for this? expression. So the equivalent NFA for this expression is an NFA that contains one state and then it contains another state which is connected by this A. Since it is just a symbol, it can be written as the transition and this becomes our final state. The names of the states do not matter here. So we just have two states and since it's an NFA, so it doesn't have to, the first one doesn't have to have any or all transitions. One transition is enough. What? Yeah, we will, we, will, we will go step by step, right? Now suppose if you have an, another expression E2, uh, which is B, uh, then the equivalent NFA would be, right? 
This is just one simple NFA with a regular, regular expression containing just one symbol. Right? Clear? Now, so if I have a... Uh, yes. So could yes. there be one state with the self loop? Uh, no. No. That's not correct. So is this in clear? And okay, so we, if you have one symbol in our regular expression, it is the automata that contains just uh, two states. And those two states are connected by the symbol that is in the expression. Okay, if you have multiple symbols, we can see uh, how, can, how can we construct NFA for that. I will just show you later. Okay, so this is the simplest thing. Now suppose I have, an, uh, so suppose I have a regular expression uh, R1 and I have a regular expression R2, two regular expressions, right? So we know that if we have a regular expression, we can construct an NFA. And if we have regular expression, we can connect, uh, we can construct an NFA. Suppose this is a regular expression R1 and this is another regular expression R2. So there must exist an NFA for R1. So let's call it M1. M1 is the NFA for R1. So there must exist another machine M24 R2. So we do not know what is the structure of these two NFAs. Imagine two NFAs exist. Okay. Now we will we will see that how to connect these NFAs for the regular expression for R1 R2, R1 plus R2, and R1 star. So these are the three things, three ways we can construct regular expressions, right? We can have R2 star, doesn't matter, it's just one since it is unit. Okay. Okay, so so we know that there exists an NFA for R1, there exists an NFA for R2. We do not know what are those NFAs and how do they look, but just imagine they, they exist NFAs for R1 and R2. Okay, but we know that if if R1 is regular and R2 is regular, then R1 R2 is also regular, R1 plus R2 is also regular, and R1 star is also regular. So there must exist an NFA for these three things. So how would these NFAs would look? So I will show you that how these NFAs will look, and then we will see a mechanism where we can start with any uh, regular expression, and we will end up with a long, large uh, NFA, which is equivalent uh, to Excel. Okay. So we say that if R1 is, regular, uh, is, is, is a regular expression, and there must exist an NFA, so there must be a starting state in the NFA, because every NFA has a starting state. There must exist one uh, accepting state in the R in the M1. We do not know which one, and there must be some transitions here. We do not know what are those transitions. So let's have this in a black box, okay? Let's have them in a black box. So this is for R1. And similar thing can be done for R2. There must be a starting state, and there must be some end state or accept state, and there's some, there must be some transitions here. We do not care what are those transitions, but there must be. Now, this is an NFA for just R1. This is an NFA for just R2. I can create an NFA for R1, R2. How can I can create it? I can just ignore this end state and create a simple state. So take the accept state of the first machine and make it a regular state and connect this state with the starting state of the second machine with an empty transition and that's it this is this machine is the machine for r1 concatenated with r2 okay so this one this is for r1 r2 so let's see what is for r1 plus r2 so we know that there is a machine for r1 that there must be some starting state there must be some ending state and some transitions. This is for R1. There must be a machine for R2. And there is a starting state. And there, there is an end accept state and some transitions. Now we are looking for R1 plus R2. How to create a machine for R1 plus R2. What we would do, we would say, OK, create a new state outside these two machines. Make it final state. Remove the final state status of these states in R1 and R2. Connect this final state with this one and this one with empty transitions. 
Now this is the NFA for R1 plus R2. Simple. You don't have to do anything. Start with an NFA and another NFA and connect these two NFAs using this way. This is for R1 plus R2. Now, if I have a machine just for R1, so this must have some start state, some transitions, and some accept state. This is for R1. So what will happen for R1 star? What will happen for R star? What we would do, we would create a new state, make it accept state, connect this starting and accept state with the start state of R1. So this is the R1, old R1. Okay, which, which has some transitions to over here. So delete the status of this uh, final state as the final state and connect this final state with the start state with it. So this is for R1 stop. Yes. The starting state is, is this one. So this new state is the starting state. Yes, you have a question? Yeah, is this thing clear? It's very simple. And when we will do some examples, it will be clear that what we are doing. Yes. Yes, a starting state could be final state. Okay. Clear? So let's start with an example, a very simple example. And that example was 0 plus 1 star 0 1. Okay. So in this expression, we have one atomic expression here, one atomic expression here, and one atomic expression here, one atomic expression. Right? So what is the NFA for just zero? Okay, this is the NFA for zero. What is the NFA for one? Same thing, just replace zero with one, right? Now we, now we have to construct NFA for this part. Sorry, for this part, that is, First of all, we find an NFA for zero plus one. So we have two NFAs. So let's find an NFA for zero plus one. So how do we find NFA for zero plus one? So we create, we take the first NFA. We remove the status of final state of the first one. We take the second NFA. We remove the final state of status of the final state here, create a new state, make it final and connect it with empty transitions. Now this is an NFA for zero plus one, right? Simple. Now we have to look at this star. Yes, yes, please. What's the question? Can you repeat your question? Okay. Yes. Uh, again, your question not clear. First NFA. This NFA? What do you mean by pass one? One is input? Yeah, then it is not accepted. Yeah, because it, there is no transition accepting one. Yeah, this is not DFA, it is NFA. So in NFA, it's fine because the transition function is a, uh, is a partial function. So we are, we are good with that. Is this in clear? So this is the NFA for zero plus one. So we have to now uh, cater for the star, which is on the whole of zero plus one, right? So what was uh, the mechanism to create an NFA for clean star? So we create another state here, a new state and make it a final state and connect this final state to to the start state, right? <clears throat> there, there's one, one more thing I, I, I forgot, uh, forgot to tell you because this NFA cannot have more than one start state, right? So in this, we have two start states. So we need to fix it. So what, how do we fix it? Uh, we fix it by uh, creating a new state here, making it start state and connect it to the start state of these two machines. So this is for zero plus one, okay? Now we need to cater for the zero plus one uh, star. So how do we do it? We create a new state, create it, uh, make it final state, then connect it. This is also empty transition. So connect it with the start state of the original one, right? And keep everything as is. Okay, 
and remove the final state status here. Remove this status. And connect it with the start state. So this is our zero plus one start. Okay, yes. Where, where do we have self loop? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we cannot. No. Right now, no. I mean, when once we start simplifying things, we can we can do that. For example, there are so many things we can simplify. So we do not we do not need uh, these double transitions with NT uh, label, right? So we can simplify, but that's not the goal right now. So we can forget about simplification. Is this thing clear? Yes. Uh, which second? This one. This one, this one, this one, uh, because we are following an algorithm. So the algorithm requires it this way. Uh, for example, if you're doing it for yourself on paper, uh, then you can do certain simplification during the process, right? Uh, but let's say if you want to uh, write a program that does it, then the program will always follow certain algorithm, right? So that algorithm has to be predefined and it has to be uh, I mean, fixed. So that's why we are following exact, exact st steps. Now, now we have uh, one more thing that is zero one at the end, right? So how do we construct zero one? So first of all, let's find the NFA for zero. NFA for zero is very simple. Uh, this is NFA for zero. Uh, what is the NFA for one? This is the NFA for one. And how do we concatenate to NFAs? Uh, we can concatenate to NFAs like this. So this is the NFA for zero, one, right? So one can argue uh, that we do not need this empty transition here because it's simplified, it can be simplified. Of course, we can simplify, uh, but right now we are not simplifying because uh, uh, we are following certain process. Uh, so, so what will be the complete NFA? So the complete NFA would be, which is for the NFA for zero plus one, star zero one would be this one, So this is the final NFA for zero plus one star zero. Yes. Which one, which zero one? Yes, uh, that's a good question. But as, as, as I said, uh, we are following certain procedure, right? So we can do the simplification later. So certain, certain simplifications can be done during the process. Uh, certain simplification have to be, I mean, we need to wait till we reach an end. Uh, so this automaton, this NFA may not look uh, elegant, but that's fine. Uh, so the purpose is that we start with a regular expression and we construct an NFA. So this is, this is actually a proof. Uh, we already have proven the first part that you start with a regular expression and you end up with uh you end up with an nfa right so the, the second sir, um yes excuse me sir is there any procedure to simplify this nfa at this stage uh th there are certain procedures we can apply to simplify uh some are simple and some are a little bit complicated for example over here i can um, rather than having this empty transition here we can just ignore it right and we can say that okay we can uh, delete the whole thing 
and we can say that there is this zero and there is this one. It will capture exactly the same thing, right? Uh, similarly, we can uh, say that we do not need this empty transition and this empty transition because this empty transition takes us to a state which takes an empty transition to go to this state and this takes an empty transition to come to this state. So there are multiple empty transitions. So we could avoid all of them and connect this state directly with this state, right? Or something like that. Uh, so we can do certain simplifications, but there is no st straightforward uh, mechanism. So we cannot uh, directly do that. Uh, all all uh, algorithms which simplify are hard algorithms, right? So it's difficult. It's not a straightforward. Anyway, is this thing clear? So we are done with the first part, which says that you start with regular expression and then you end up with an effect. Okay. The second part, which says that you start with an NFA and you, you get with a regular expression. That is, I, I give you this NFA or any other NFA and I ask you, what is the underlying regular expression? Uh, and that is not a simple step. And I will just show you a few things, but I will not go into detail that how to do it. Uh, the algo is a little bit involved. It is already in the book. So if you are interested, please go there. And I have some slides, I've, I've prepared some slides before, so I, I can share those slides with you and then uh, you, can, you can study that. Uh, so do you want a break here? So we can all go for maybe five, 10 minutes break. And when we come back, we will uh, study other things. Okay, so thank you. We will come back in uh, maybe 10 minutes, 7.45. Yes, sir. Uh, Seven forty-five is not good. Are you sure? Okay, let's come back at seven fifty. So I will I will pull, pause recording and uh, we will come back at seven. Hello, everyone. Once again, welcome. Are you all back? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Great. So we will start in maybe a few seconds. <clears throat> Sir, आपने जो पिछली regular expression का पूरा वो process बनाया है, उसको आप एक बार summarize कर देंगे Yes. Uh, any question? Uh, if you have any question, please related to this. So there is this question that I, I need to summarize, so I will do it. Yes. Sir, uh, I just need to ask you one thing. Uh, is there any such expression where we have uh, zero intersection one uh, whole star? So zero intersection. So we are not talking about intersection. We are only talking about union. But can we have it? Like, is it possible? Uh, It is possible, yes, it is possible. Okay, so actually you can uh, define intersection. Um, yeah, it is possible, yes, it is possible. Yeah, but what strings will it contain then? So can you give me an example? What uh, what was the expression? Um, zero intersection one. Zero intersection one. Full start. Okay, can anyone tell me what would be uh, the strings in this language? Think again. Think again, it's wrong. So, so the only string that will be in this language would be empty. Because zero and one do not have anything in common. So zero intersection one is empty. An empty star is just empty. Okay? Because one or multiple copies of empty is just empty. So, so we can have, I mean, uh, we, we can have intersection in more meaningful ways. For example, uh, let's say you can have zero plus one star. And then you can say intersection with uh, 
intersection with, uh, uh, let's say, zero, one, zero plus one, and uh, not, not that one, sorry. So zero star, one, zero star. Now, it, it's it's little bit meaningful in a sense that at the end you can simplify it as zero star one zero star uh, because these things are inside here, right? Uh, but since we have intersection, it means that whatever strings that you will get, they should be in this form. If they are not in this form, they will not be included. Anyway, but we can simplify. Yes, so intersection is also a possible uh, operation, but uh, what we don't usually include in the discussion. Uh, and sometimes I leave it for the discussion in exam. So yeah, so it is it is a possible operation. Okay, sir, got it. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, uh, so we have now we we know that uh, what is a regular expression, and what is an NFA. We also know what is a DFA, and we know that how to convert from regular expression to NFA. Now we will see that how to convert an NFA into DFA. So actually, this part should be done before uh, this part, but it's okay. Uh, but before we go there, uh, let me revise how to go from regular expression to NFA uh, once again. Uh, it's very simple. So we first of all, you need to know what is a regular expression. So let me formally define what is a regular expression. So we say that uh, empty set is regular expression. Empty string is regular expression. Any alpha symbol from the alphabet is regular expression. Okay. If R1 and R2 are regular expressions, then R1, R2 is a regular expression. R1 plus R2 is a regular expression. So sometimes we write this way, it doesn't matter. R1 star is regular expression. And these are the only regular expressions. There is no other regular. These are the only ways of saying regular expression. So when we say that the empty set is regular expression, it means that we are talking about the language that does not contain anything. Okay, an empty set. Since, since uh, a language is set of strings, so a set can contain one string or two strings or infinitely many, it may also contain zero strings. So zero string, if, if there is no string in the language, it means the language is empty and that is represented using this empty set notation. So that is also a regular expression. So a regular expression could just be the empty string itself. And it, it means that this language contains just one string and that string is the empty string. And the rest of the things we already have done. Now for, for all of them, we will introduce an NFA, right? So first of all, let's see what is an NFA for this one. So an NFA for this one is just this one. An NFA with one state, no transitions and no final state. Okay. What is the NFA for the empty string? This is the NFA for the empty string, empty string. So there is one state and that state is also the final state and there are no transitions. Okay. Uh, what is the uh, NFA for any single symbol? For example, A, for example, A is a symbol in the alphabet. Uh, then we know that this is the way of creating an NFA. Okay, so I'm, I'm revising and repeating what we did uh, in the last one hour. Okay. Uh, so if R1 is, is a regular expression and R2 is a regular expression, so there must be, uh, there must be some machine, some NFA for R1, okay, and some NFA for R2, right? So it must have a start state this must have a start state. This must have some final state except state. This must have some final state. So what is the NFA for R1, R2? That is the concatenation of these two. So we, we, we place them together or one above the other and we remove the status of the final state from here. We just make it an ordinary state, connect this to the starting state of the next one, connect it with an empty string that's it. This is for R1, R2. 
uh, what to do with R1 union R2. R1 union R2 is very simple. So what we do, uh, we place it here, which is R1. It has a starting state. It has some accepting state. This is for R1. And R2 has the similar thing. We have starting state. We have uh, accepting state. So what we would do, we would um, uh, we would create a new state here. Make it the starting state. Connect it with the starting state of the first R1 with empty transition. Connect it with the starting state of the second machine with the empty transition. And that's it. This is for R1 plus R2. And the third one, which is the star. So we said, okay, suppose this is for the R1. That is like this. So there are some transitions and some uh, final state. Uh, in order to create uh, for R star or R1 star, what we would do, uh, we would create a new state here, make it starting and the final state, accepting state, connect it with an empty uh, transition to the starting state of the old machine. So this is the old machine. Okay. And we will have the transition and we will make the old final state as the ordinary state and connect it with the new state that we just created outside the machine and connect it with the empty state. So this is for R1 star. This is R1 and this is R1 star. Clear? Yes. Question? Sure. Um, yes. So why is null a regular expression? I mean, the NFA we get for it is basically accepting nothing. So why do we... That, that's a very good question and I will come back in one minute. Yes. Star operation and empty set is empty set. Because the star operation means that whatever that, that is in the set, you can use zero or multiple copies. Since there is nothing inside, so multiple copies of nothing is number, nothing. So, so for example, if you have a null set, an empty set, and you put a star, then this is just the empty set. Okay. Now, coming back to your question that why uh, we have a language. Now, now okay, suppose there is a language L that contains nothing, okay? Containing nothing means that there is no string in it. So if I try to find out the size of the set, the size of the set is zero, right? Because there are no elements in the set, okay? Uh, is zero a finite number or an infinite? Zero is a finite number, right? And we will later on prove, and sometimes I keep it for the, uh, for the exam. So this is question out for the MNA. So, so, Basically, every finite language is regular. Okay, by definition, a finite language is, is regular. So we know that fine, uh, regular languages are not necessarily finite. They are infinite, right? Because uh, zero star is a language which is infinite. Why? Because zero star contains strings as empty string, just one zero, then two zeros, three zeros, and so on and so forth. So the number of strings are infinite. <clears throat> So regular expressions can, can, can be infinite and usually they are infinite. But <coughs> uh, there are many uh, languages, many languages which are finite. And by definition, every finite language is regular. Not every infinite language is regular, but every finite language by definition is regular. And since this empty language is finite because there is zero strings in it and zero is a finite number, therefore, this L is a regular language. And if it is a regular language, then we know that there must exist an NFA for that. And we know there exists an NFA for that. And that NFA contains just one string, no transitions, no final state, no accepting state, and that's it. So this is an NFA. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. okay so let's move on. And um, I will. So I will, uh, actually I have notes which I have prepared and uh, actually not notes, slides, which I use in my lectures. And these, these are something that, uh, that evolved over the years. So they are nothing fancy. They are mostly from the book, uh, but okay. So we found that how to convert a regular expression into NFA, right? And I said that there is a way to convert an NFA into 
directed expression. So once we do both of these things, there is the proof in this direction and the proof in this direction, uh, we would be done with the proof. Uh, so I'm doing the proof here, which I just showed you because this is the proof by construction. Uh, there are many multiple different types of proof. So this is a one type of proof, which, which is a proof by construction. Uh, I'm not going to provide a proof here in the class because it's a little bit involved and, uh, and there's nothing that you will learn which will be useful in the other part of this course. So I will include it in my slides and I will provide you the slide so that you can read it from the slide and you can also read it from the book. Uh, but since it doesn't give us any other further insights, so I will not cover it. Uh, there's one more thing that we need to do and that is if we have an NFA, then how we can convert an NFA into DFA. As we discussed last time that NFAs and DFAs are equal. So if they are equal and there must be a way to convert an NFA into DFA, right? And furthermore, since we converted an, a regular expression into an NFA, and um, we know that regular languages have DFA, so, so where is this DFA? We have an NFA. So we need to find out, we need to figure out uh, how to convert an NFA into a DFA. So I will construct a very simple NFA, and then I will show you that how we can convert an NFA into DFA, and that will be uh, the end of the class. So, so, so let me uh, construct. So let, let's see, we have an NFA. So NFA is this one. So this is state number one. So we can give any names to a state. One, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, Q1, Q2, Q3, P1, P2, anything. Okay. So we have another state, state number two, another state, state number three. Uh, the thing is that this DFA looks like this. So when in the state one, uh, if it, it, it can get, go to state number three by an empty transition, it can come back to one from three by reading an A. So the sigma is just A, B. Okay, the alphabet is A. When it is in state two, sorry, uh, it can come back to state three by either reading A or reading B. Okay, and if it reads A, it can also stay in state two. And if it reads B from state uh, uh, one, it goes to B. So this is clearly an NFA. Why it is an NFA? Because over here in state two, there are two transitions going out of two, which are both labeled with the same uh, symbol, which is A. And we have a transition containing uh, empty transition, right? So if either an empty transition exists in the, in the machine, or there is uh, there are multiple transitions with the same label that are going to two different states, then that make uh, the machine a non-deterministic machine. So this is clearly a case of a non-deterministic machine or NFA. So let's convert this NFA into DFA. So how we can convert this NFA into DFA? So we know that NFA is defined by five things. Uh, the set of states, the set of alphabet, uh, transition function, initial state or the starting state and the final state. And the same thing happens for the, for the DFA. And DFA has exactly the five things, right? Uh, but the difference here is in the, uh, in the uh, transition function. So the transition function for DFA, so let me write it uh, as the transition function for the DFA. So, so write, let me write DFA as a subscript here to tell that this is the transition function for the DFA. So the transition function for DFA is defined as that we need to know what state we are in and we need to know what symbol that we are reading. And as a result, we would decide which state to go. While the transition function for an NFA, a transition function for an NFA is a little bit complicated. It starts with with a state and the symbol that we are reading. And it tells us that we can be in any uh, power, any state, which is a power set of the, all states. Now, since we have three states here, one, two, three, uh, so Q here for the DFA, Q for the NFA contains one, two, and three. Can you tell me what is power set of Q NFA? And how many states, how many elements we would have in this set? Do you know what is the power set? Um, we'll have one, two, and three. Uh, no, what is power set? It contains all the members of the set. Power set is a set of all subsets of the set, right? So empty set is a subset of every set. So empty set here is here. So we can write empty set here. 
and one is a subset, so one is there, two is there, three is there. So these are all uh, the subsets with zero elements or one element. Now we will have all those subsets with two elements. What are those subsets with two elements? One, two, one, three, and two, three. And then we will have all the subsets with all elements, three elements, and that is one, two, three. How many uh, subsets we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we have eight elements, eight subsets. Why eight? Because we have three here. So two power three is eight. So eight, uh, eight subsets in our power subset. So each subset here will represent one state in the corresponding DFA. So this power set of NFA becomes our Q DFA. So this is the Q NFA which contains three state and QDFA will contain eight state. And that's exactly what I said initially, I think last week, uh, that NFA and DFA, even though they recognize same kind of languages, uh, once you convert a DFA into NFA, it, it explodes exponentially. And we can see that why this exponential thing comes from. So if there are N states in DFA, there would be two power N states. If there are N states in NFA, there would be two power N states in, in the DFA. Right, so it exponential growth. So the number of states in a DFA is O of two power n, where n is the uh, number of states in the NFA. Right, I believe you are familiar with the O notation. Are you? No? Have you done algorithms? Data structures? You have done data structures? So you have not covered O notations in data structures? You have. Thank God. I, I thought that you have. Anyway, so if we have, uh, so you, do you remember the subsets? Five was, the empty set was there. One was there. Two was there. Three was there. One, two. One, three. Two, three. And one, two, three. Okay. So all of them will be the states in our DFA. So we will have one state with empty. We will have one state with just one. We will have one state with just two. We will have one state with just three. We will have one state with both one and two. One, three. Two, three. And okay, so these are the new names of the states. Now we have to work with the transition function, okay? So how we would work with transition function, we will come here and see. Once the machine is in state one, where does it go if it reads A? Where does this machine go when it reads A? Three. Does it? Oh, sorry, no. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere, right? So when it reads three, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So it means that it, it remains in, in one, right? But when it remains in one, there is an empty transition that takes from one to three, right? Which, it, which takes it from one to three. Right, so it means it could be in three. Right. Okay, but let, let's forget about that. So once it reads A, it doesn't go anywhere. Right, it doesn't go anywhere. <clears throat> okay, so we will, so, so this is the state one. So when it reads one, it doesn't go anywhere. So let's come back Sorry. and see when, when the machine is in state one, when it reads B, where does it go? It goes to two. So you will have this one. Okay. Okay. When the machine is in no state and it reads one or zero, where does it go? It goes nowhere, right? Okay. Okay. And when the machine is in one, it reads A, it goes nowhere. 
it goes to empty because it's it's a kind of error thing. Okay, so we are done with uh, null, the empty set. We are done with one, and we are done. So we are done with one. So since it is a DFA, so every state must have two outgoing edges, right? Because the alphabet contains two symbols. So let's talk about B. When we are in a state B in uh, state two, when in in we read A, where do we go? Where does this machine go? It can either stay in two or it can go to three. It can either stay in two or go to three. So what we will do, we will find if two and three come together in any of these states. They come here in this one, right? So let's see what happens when the machine is in state two and reads B. Where does it go? It goes to three, right? So it only goes to three. So we are done with this state, this state, and this state. Let's go to state number three. When the machine is in three and it reads A, where does it go? It goes to one. Does it go anywhere else? No. So it means that when in three, it goes to one. Okay. When the machine is in three, it reads B, where does it go? It does not go anywhere, so it goes to to the empty state. Yes. Uh, three comes to itself with. Uh, no, we are not talking about MD right now. Okay, so we will come back to it a little bit later. Okay, is this in clear? Okay, so we are done with these four states. Let's talk about one, two. What does it mean by one, two? So, what we will do, so rather than looking at one state at a time, we will look at two states. What is one and two? So, we will look at both one and two. So where do we go? Where does this machine go when this is in a state one and it reads A? It goes to empty, it doesn't go anywhere. Where does the machine go when it is in state two and reads A? It goes to, it either stays in two or goes to three. So what is the union of empty sets and two, three? Two, three. So from here, we know that it will come here. Okay, so we will just do the union. So this is done with A, let's do for the B. So what happens when the machine is in one and it reads B? It goes to two. When the machine is in B, when the machine is in state two and it reads B, where does it go? Three. So what is the union of two and three? Two and three. So it's not just A, it is also B. So we are done with this state as well. Let's talk about one, three. When the machine is in one, it reads A. Where does it go? Empty string. When the machine is in three, where does it go? To one. So what is the union of empty and one? One. Okay, what about B? When the machine is in one and reads B, it goes to state two. When the machine is in three and reads B, goes where? Nowhere, so just two. So, Okay, so we are done with this state as well. Two more states to go. What about two, three? When we are in state three, where does the machine go when it reads A? It stays in two or goes to three, okay? When the machine is in uh, three, where does it go if it reads A? One, so what is the union of two, three and one? One, two, three. Okay, one, two, three is already there. So let's talk about B. When the machine is in state two, reads B. Where does it go? Just three. When the machine is in state three, reads B. Where does it go? Nowhere. Right? So in this case, when the machine is in two, three, and reads B, it only goes to, sorry, it only goes to three. Yes, it only goes to three. So we are done with this state as well. Let's talk about the last state. And last state is something where we have the union everything. When the machine is in one and reads A, where does it go? Nowhere. When the machine is in two and it reads A, where does it go? Two or three. And the, when the machine is in three, it, it reads uh, A, where does it go? One. So it means that we have to union everything. This is the case. Let's talk about B. When the machine is in one and reads B, where does it go? 
two. When the machine is in two and reads B, where does it go? Three. When the machine is in three, reads B, where does it go? Nowhere. So only thing that the only thing where it goes is two, three. So where is two, three? Here. So this so is the. Why would why will it be two three? Uh, because okay, so let's let's do it again once again. One two three and B. When state one it reads B, where does it go? Two. Two. When it state two reads B, where does it go? Three. three so we yeah. have union two and three. When it state okay. three reads B, where does it go? Nowhere. So what is the union Nowhere. of three? Just two, three. three. That's it. This is the DFA of the NFA that we just constructed. Okay. Now we haven't yet discussed what happens with the empty transitions, and uh, I will explain it in in our Thursday's class. So I will stop here. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, otherwise, I will just say thank you. If if anyone anyone has any question in uh, over here in the classroom or online on the Zoom. Do you have any questions? Uh, anyone? <laughs> can, can you draw in later? Late you mean in the problem set? Well, you can. If you can draw the automata in LaTeX, that's perfect. That's fine. I would prefer that. But if you cannot, then just draw it clearly on the paper. Scan it and do it. Okay. Sir, um, do we have to show the working? Question in the classroom. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. That, that, that's a good question. I, I will come. I, I will explain. Yes, what's the question uh, from someone in the Zoom? Yes, sir. Uh, do we have to show the working reset? Uh, no. I mean, working, it depends. I mean, okay, let's say you come up with a machine, then you don't have to show that how did you come up with the machine. But something requires a proof or a little bit work, then you show it. Yes, okay. for example, sir, if you have conversion, there is a conversion of the steps and you can show it. You don't have to show that. That's it. Okay, in uh, in problem set, there is a symbol plus that I used uh, on uh, some alphabet, right? So, for example, we know what is meant by zero star. What is meant by zero star? It means that it is a set which is empty string or zero or zero zero or zero 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 and so on, right? And it's an infinite set. Similarly, we define zero zero plus. Zero plus is very similar to star. Uh, so it is exactly zero star without the empty string. Okay, so this is zero star. Oh, sorry, this is zero star minus the empty string. Okay, so it is a zero star minus the empty string. Okay, uh, I think that's all for today. If you have uh, any other questions, please let me know. Um, so I will stay in the classroom for a few more minutes. So if you have any questions, you can, you can come to me and we can discuss. Uh, if anyone on Zoom has any question, uh, you can ask me or you can send me an email. I'm sorry, I, couldn't, I, I cannot uh, read your chat because it's, it's blocked, uh, blocked here. So no, please don't. Yes. Nay. Yes. Diagram in Akron, the chocolate, yeah. Yes. Yes. A PDF is fine. I don't want to compile your file. Okay, thank you very much. I'll see you again on Tuesday. I think in a similar uh, situation. Uh, we will try that it is better then. Okay, thank you very much.